Hey there again, YouTube. This is Sean back at uh, for another episode of Teardown Tube. And here I got, you can obviously see, it's an old um, GameCube that I pulled off. It's a little bit dusty. I haven't used it in a little while, but um, I'm going to do a teardown for you guys. I know this has been done before, but I just love tearing apart older game consoles. So the first thing you need to do is, you'll notice that there are four screws, one in each corner. Um, the problem is they're security type screws, so you can't use a regular screwdriver, but I've already taken this apart a million times before and I've replaced them with uh, standard Phillips. So let me just do that for you guys right now. It's actually interesting, there's several methods of removing um, the type of security screw that they use here. And one of them is to take a, like a Bic um, plastic pen, pull out the cap part, and then heat the tube with a lighter and then insert it into the screw head so that you can um, form basically your own custom bit. It molds around the screw head so that you can remove the screw without damaging anything. But I actually went and I took a piece of um, metal and I uh, cut it so that it would actually conform to the head. That's what I did. So here they popped right out. And finally the moment of truth. There you go. Um, I would suggest when doing a teardown, always keep a disc um, on the drive itself so that you don't scratch the lens or anything, God forbid anything happen like that. Basically, <clears throat> you want to take this and pull this out, but don't pull it out all the way because there's a ribbon connector right here connecting the game ports and the um, backup battery. And just uh, gently pull on the tab right there and you can pull it right out. It's just a friction fit. And you can do the same for the back, you just lift out the panel, there's no electronics connected right there. And basically, you'll notice this is the uh, main power switch, it's just a mechanical type. You have your um, your fan which flows air through the heatsink assembly. And this guy, uh, these two switches are the, the disc lid sensor, it'll actually sense whether um, the lid is closed or not, so it will refuse to play a game, obviously, if the lid is not closed. Now, let's go for the fan. Basically, just two more screws here. One on each side of the fan, and then the entire power, uh, power input uh, switch and fan assembly can just lean to the side like that. And then I always like taking off the game controller port um, grounding tabs about now since you're going to have to take them out anyway later. <clears throat> okay, with that out of the way, now we can proceed. There are a ton of screws all around the perimeter here, so just a matter of getting in there and removing all of them. I've pretty much taken apart everything that I own, so I mean obviously this would be a lot harder to unscrew if these were factory uh, installed screws. I've already taken them out and I, I don't rescrew things in very tightly so that if I ever need to repair or anything, I have easy access to that. Except for this one screw, apparently. <laughs> okay. You'll notice that this is uh, one of the earlier model GameCubes. It has the, um, the standard um, video port as well as a digital one, I believe. The latter ones actually did away with the um, digital port, and so they only have 
analog out, I believe. Don't quote me on that, though. Okay. This is a lot of screws. <laughs> well, they really wanted to make sure that no one, uh, or, you know, these two halves wouldn't separate. No one would get in there. Okay, now we can finally take out the disk drive. That just pops right out. There's, um, there's a little uh, connector on here. That's pretty much the only interface for the drive here. And I guess we'll, I'll show you the, um, the disk drive's uh, board on the underside here. There are just six screws on the bottom retaining the, um, the shielding plate. Now while I'm doing a teardown on this, um, I'm actually going to put it all back together because I plan on using this GameCube later on, so I'll maybe do like a sped up montage at the end or something. So this is basically the uh, driver board. If it will focus, I don't know, my camera focus is a little shoddy. But um, there's basically not much to it, just the controller chip there. And the various um, ZIF cable, well, friction fit and ZIF cables go into the um, laser lens assembly and the um, spindle motor. And that's pretty much it other than this little guy here, which connects at the uh, disc lid sensor. And uh, I believe it's a Xeno GC, um, it's a mod chip for the uh, drive assembly. It actually interfaces to this board here. Um, it basically bypasses some of the security. I know that was one of the options going about. I just got an SD media launcher so that I could um, play my backups in case, God forbid, anything happened to the original copy. And basically, let's put that aside right there. Okay. This should just... At this point... Oh, yeah. There's um, six screws holding the uh, heat sink and thus the uh, shielding, the metal shielding retainer at the bottom to the uh, black bottom base. So you need to remove those next in order to entirely pull out the um, motherboard. It's kind of like an initiation thing at my house. Um, whenever I get a new piece of electronic, I have to tear it apart first. <laughs> I mean, first I'll make sure that it works, and then second I'll tear it apart, just to see inside, non-destructively, of course, if I can help it. <laughs> okay. Well, this should just lift right out. And indeed it does. Don't lose any screws. That'll be a massacre. Okay. Basically, this is the, uh, the motherboard. And you'll notice the, um, the expansion ports on the bottom, the serial, the Ethernet, and whatnot. And basically, it's a very clean layout on the bottom. Uh, it's on the top what's interesting. Um, I have another, a, a second motherboard that I'll show you. I don't want to remove the heatsink on this guy because I'll need to reapply thermal paste. But... This guy, I have a um, second GameCube here that I've already modded for the um, to put a um, like an SD card reader mod chip on there so that I could um, play games off of SD. And basically, with a little bit of force, very carefully, you could remove the. Um, let's get a focus in there. There we go. You can remove the heat sink. And basically the design is that the fan will blow air going this way, this direction, to dissipate the heat from the left side of the cube to the right out of the case. 
and basically the difference between these two boards are different as you notice as I said this only has the standard analog output this has the analog and digital uh, this guy right here and so this is the older board and this guy's the newer board um, basically the um, the processor chips and whatnot are identical in the uh, RAM but the difference is this board um, has this oh, let me do this hard doing things with one hand has this um, port which is the power and you'll notice that the newer revision has the um, power supply built into the, um, the motherboard itself so it accepts uh, 12 volts directly a few interesting things to notice uh, basically the uh, clock crystal right here it's hard to get this guy to focus um, and basically uh, the power supply section right here you'll notice the um, the inductors on the input there and also the um, fuse if if you know something happens and you hear a small poof and your GameCube doesn't turn on again uh, first thing I would check is this little guy right here. I, I would check it with a multimeter on continuity and see if it's still conducting or not. If it's blown, then I would replace that. Just, you know. But unfortunately, that won't fix all problems. But anyway, uh, let's get back to the other board right there. And I can uh, remove the last little vestiges of GameCubeness. Okay. So basically all that we have left right now is, wow, it's dusty, <laughs> is this bottom plate and the power supply in the bottom there. It's just two screws keeping us from the uh, power supply goodness right there. Uh, if I can remove them. It really went through a lot of expense to, um, to properly shield this guy here. Now this should... Let's see. There's just four more screws. Sorry, I lied. That wasn't the last uh, set of screws there. <laughs> uh, retaining the power supply board, which the fan plugs into. Uh, hard to get in there. And now this should just lift out. There we go. Other than the retaining plate, this guy is the power supply. Come on, focus. There we go. And it's basically like any other switch mode uh, power supply that, uh, you know, if you've taken apart a lot of things, um, lots and lots of inductors and caps. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. This guy is the um, the controller for that. Let's see. It's a Texas Instruments SN105229. And nothing really all that surprising there. It's very dense, um, especially with the passives, the uh, support passives. A very dense layout there. And very thick, beefy. Here you got a very thick, beefy inductor and... Um, the, the uh, power plane around it. Very good design job. Here's another uh, fuse if, if something, you know, God forbid, goes wrong and your GameCube doesn't turn on again. Another place I would check. Other than that, nothing all that uh, surprising here. Uh, people have done uh, pinouts, you know, if, if you're into GameCube modding and you want to, if you have an older model GameCube and you want to just ditch this power board and be able to supply, you know, uh, whatever voltage you're working at directly, uh, you can actually do that. I believe the core, the processor core requires several uh, voltages like 12 volts, 5 volts, 3.3 volts, maybe even 1.8. It, it's similar for a lot of FPGAs. They require multiple core voltages. And so you could actually ditch this and roll your own solution. But, um, okay, I'll be... Right back, I'll speed through this, but I'm actually just gonna go and reassemble this all. And yep.
And there we go, it's all back together now. I hope you enjoyed the uh, teardown today. Um, I have a ton of other old game systems, so I hope to get around to taking apart at least one of every single system that I own, and possibly any more that I get in the future. And basically, you know, uh, stay tuned. If you like what I'm doing, um, you know, subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up, leave a few comments. If you don't like what I'm doing, leave a few comments, uh, let me know. Um, yeah, basically that's it for this week. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, adios.